Man, this is lifestyles of the poor and unfucking fortunate. But I tell you what, but 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 bitch, we got views. Other since two thousand what? Ten? No, yeah, nine. Ten. Two thousand nine. Two thousand nine. Yeah, was, uh, yeah. In front of Flip Shop, old shop right there in Jackson, was that first little bit we shot with it? Yeah, it was. It was in Jackson um, when he was doing the Bad Influence album. Yep. Mm -hmm. And um, again, this is Chad Arms TV. This is the follow up from last year. Last year's was. September, so we're this is in the end of July when we're shooting this one, and we're just following up with White man. This is a like I said, he's family, so we're gonna kind of just get into some stuff. Um, on the last interview, people, the comments we get most about those interviews is the same comment that you get all the time. When right? you drop some new music, that, <laughs> and I thought he was dead. How is that? I don't understand. Thing, bro, like, in like, 2009, when I met you, this was a thing. It was a thing then. Yes, and you joked about it then, and it's been 13 years. Well, you, I told you the original story how it started, right? Go ahead and tell the we'll, people. We'll get into it. But yeah. I, the original story, and I'll make it quick. So, yeah. When I first dropped Doubt Me Now, it was 2003. Um, I have a blood cousin. I've only got three, four. I think like four or five, four blood cousins that live in Memphis or the Memphis area. Mm -hmm. So anytime anybody in the Memphis area is like, man, that's my cousin. Yeah, we met once. You know what I'm saying? Right. So um, my blood cousin, shout out to Melissa. Uh, she was going to, uh, I want to say Missouri State or University of Missouri. It was one of the two. I can't really remember. Yeah. But um, she got like a full ride scholarship for like track or something. So she was, she's a beautiful young lady. She's gorgeous. She's smart, yeah. athletic. She's desired by the guys. Right. So once the school found out that I was her cousin, um, once the school found out I was her blood cousin, um, you know, everybody was trying to get at her. Well, Oxycontin had just dropped, the album had just dropped and all this shit. And she, she, the way it sounded from still trying to remember the full story all, after all those years, a dude tried to holler at her. She turned him down. And he was like, fuck that. So she went home for Thanksgiving break. And he stayed back, and over Thanksgiving break, he spread the rumor that Lil White died. So by the time she got back to school, the whole school done spread this rumor that went from, you know, frat houses stick together. So this shit, you know, went out in emails, and, like, it spread like why It was like viral before viral was viral. And that was right after Down Me Now, right? right after Down yeah, Me Now yeah. dropped. I mean, it was probably the summer. Well, see, Down Me Now dropped in March, so yeah, that, that winter. So yeah, maybe yeah. eight months later. Yeah. So that's how the whole rumor started. So like, I literally get a call from my cousin screaming and crying, and I'm like, "What? What? What? What's going on?" She's like, "Somebody told me you overdosed and died." I was like, "Well, I just answered the phone. I obviously didn't." Right. So that's how that whole shit started. So it spread so far through colleges and like MySpace and shit like that's what helped right. spread it. And considering I wasn't that big of an artist yet, there wasn't much on television. There wasn't nothing on television about it. Right. You know, I was only featured in a few magazine articles here and there. So until that next album came out, nobody knew. Well, if you thought I was dead, you weren't looking for the next album. That was what I've noticed through a lot of fans. Right. They weren't looking for the music because they didn't think I was alive. I've actually ran into a fan about a year ago that thought I was dead. And, like, he started crying. He was like, dude, um... Uh, so wild. I've man. only got Doubt Me Now. I was like, well, you're missing like 22 projects, boss. Like, you got, <laughs> you got to catch up, son. Like, I done went through Baby Mamas and all kinds of shit, dude. You got a whole fucking, yeah. you got to read the Bible now at this point. But, uh, yeah, back to what you were saying. Like, that one is, um, it still blows my mind, man. Bro, tell us, what are some of the rumors that you heard about how, other uh, than just. Obviously overdose. Right. Obviously, overdose on everything. Everything you think of, I've heard that story. I've heard that story, overdose on everything. I've heard that I got hit by a train. Mm -hmm. I've heard that I was in a plane crash. I've heard that I was in a bungee jumping accident. I've heard that I, mean, I, I got mauled by a bear. That's really when you heard Yeah, and anybody that knows me, when the fuck are you going to see me near some bears? Come on, man. I remember in the 09, inter in the 09 clip we had, somebody said something was back, somebody Dick Cheney. Shot you in a hunting accident? Dick Cheney shot me in a hunting accident. Yeah, I mean, dude, there's been some crazy ones out there, dude. I can't and believe been some, that. Dude. I mean, there's been a lot of them that I died from, like, whores, like, strapping me to a bed and, and like, cutting me up into pieces. Yeah. I've heard some funny shit, man. Like, that, like, that even blows my mind. Like, why do these people come up with this shit, man? Like, how? That's wild to me, dog. But That's, that, I think that, that, I think the, uh, I think the bear one was the funny one, though. That, that's, 
by far the most insane. And one I've it was heard. a polar bear. What the fuck am I doing in Antarctica? Where were you at? Yeah. Like, yeah. What am I doing in Antarctica? <laughs> was I trying to get the perfect little white uh, photo shoot or some shit? Like, got attacked by a polar bear? All right, why well, stand next to this polar bear? It's gonna be beautiful. Yeah. Like, the fuck? No, no, fuck no. Our, I can We use green screen for that, people. Fucking green screen. We don't yeah. actually. No, nobody flies to fucking Antarctica to get a fucking picture sitting on a fucking glacier. Right. They well, sit in a chair and they shop Photoshop and sit in there. Well, and see, so to disparage any rumors, also, it is 2022. I don't Bush either. Right. We're going to get into that in a second, that. too. It's 2022, and Lil White is still well and, and well alive, everybody. So there's and that. And actually more healthier than I've ever been in my life. You have. Since life. last, you've lost, what, 30 pounds I've since the last interview? I've lost 30 pounds since last interview. I've been working out for the last seven months, like, strong, like, uh, with, a, with a personal trainer. Yeah. Shout out to uh, motherfucking uh, Eric, blah, 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 Reinhardt, sorry. Shout out to Andrew Reinhardt. Follow him for uh, Reinhardt Fitness on uh, Instagram if you're in the Memphis area and trying to get, oh, trying to get in shape. No, so. All right. <laughs> so, yeah, it's – it's um, that's definitely – another thing everybody asked about in the interviews, lift your head up and show them that's a tattoo that you didn't cut yourself. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. I mean, if you cut your own head and throat, I mean, you're going to die. Dude. Right. I mean, people are like, well, what happened to his neck? Like, it's a tattoo. All right, so, like, the, even the story behind this one, dude, like, everything's got a story. So, um – Caught my baby mama cheating. Walked in on her with somebody. I'm actually cool with that person to this day. <laughs> so Mike, uh, I'm dead serious. I'm cool with Mike. No, Shout out to Mike P. That, yeah, that's that's um, salute. Motherfucker saved my life. Uh, <laughs> so I walked in. I walked in on baby mama cheating, and uh, I kind of like lost my mind for a minute. And my daughter was with me, and I was in this little bubble of about to kill her. And uh, my little, little girl goes, "Daddy, why is mommy in bed with another guy?" And oh, she Lord. was like four at the time, you know what I'm saying? Three. And it just kind of took my mind off of it. And I just grabbed her, you know, I grabbed her swimming clothes and I went out to Flips to go swimming, actually. Mm -hmm. That's where I got this tap for Flips. Shout out to the Flip, man. We was in Jackson. And uh, it was either cut that bitch's head off mm -hmm. or just cut mine. Yeah, I think you got and that I, right before I met you. The yeah, first time. I did. I got it yeah. that fucking weekend before. I met yeah, you. yeah, I remember I was you up talking about a lot when me and her split up. I was just trying to get out of Memphis to just stay away. Yeah, but um, it's it's actually just simple. And ever since then, I've just been cutthroat. Ever since then, I haven't. My trust levels have been bad. You know what I'm saying? It's, yeah. There's a lot of meaning to it. And then, like a lot of people don't know about my tiger tat. It used to be her lips right here. I dropped the whole city on that bitch. Mm. Oh, it's that Memphis Tiger. Hell yeah. Bow. She's like, Bow. what happened to my lip tattoo? I dropped the city on you. <laughs> That's how much you it's matter. That wicked witch here right there, dog. Hey, man. I don't, hey, man. I'm vindictive. I'm just, I can do it with a smile and these blue eyes. So, yeah, there's that clears up that rumor. He intentionally does not have a, a sliced throat. Yes. Either. No, I do not. So. You're in the background for uh, sound effects. Get fucking right, brother. Don't you turn that look, side look. by side over on me. Look, when, we, when I flipped the side by side, he was in it. And I was like, Reggie, you okay? He goes, oh, brother. <laughs> I did my best Randy Savage. That is oh, dope. Brother. Randy Savage does his best Reggie Butler. Fuck you talking about. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's not his real voice. That's your real voice. Yeah. yeah. It really is. The, um, so another thing people were asking about in the comments is we want to know what White's thoughts are on Suicide Boys. I actually, um, at first, you know, at first I had my, hey, Chaser, hit me in the, with another one of these non-alcoholic bushes. <laughs> Ready to get fucking drunk today, boy. Woo! <laughs> drunk on life, baby. I'm drunk on life. I've been taking sweet tea shots. As a matter of fact, let me get another shot of sweet tea with the two limes. This is all going to come into play later, y'all. For funny. sure. It's, We're gonna... it's actually funny. It's very sad. It sucks, but it's funny, and it's gonna get, we'll get into that later. Yeah. But sure. uh, Suicide Boys, at first, I was on the fence because uh, I was on the fence because a few reasons, and I'm just going to put it out there. A lot of motherfuckers won't. Um, I'm white. Let's just start there. Mm -hmm. Caucasian, not W-Y-T. That's number one. I'm Caucasian. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. The goddamn bushes. Woo-hoo. Get my goddamn sh double shot of sweet tea. That's a sweet tea Squirt shot. Squirt us a little lime in there. Yeah. See, you got to figure out how to trick your brain into thinking you're still drinking when you're not. 
And again, this will get funny here in a little while. For sure, while. we're going to talk about all that. For but, sure. But because um, everybody that knows me knows about right now, by now I'd be taking a shot of Crown. And, and then we're only five minutes in the interview. Yeah. Well, it's still early in the day, but still. Um, there's no way this interview is going to end up drunk, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> now, I did go outside and hit a joint, and I guess still more to smoke, but yeah. we're going to go to uh, a break here in a minute. But, um, so I was on the fence at first because, number one, I'm Caucasian. And um, at first, I didn't know they were white. And then a partner of mine, uh, he just, uh, he always is always on, um, He's always online looking for the new shit. He's just he's just one of those YouTube guys. He just stays on YouTube and just mm -hmm. constantly finding new shit. Yeah. And uh, now these three chicks are about to walk in. They're, they look like three Karens. I have no clue how loud they might be, and I have no problem telling them to shut the fuck up. But there's oh, yeah. a sign on the door that says no Karens. So anyway, <laughs> we're doing a podcast, bitch. Mm -hmm. um, and I will gladly tell them. Yeah, y'all better sit over there. Sit over there. Sit over on their side. Don't sit over here. We're doing a podcast. Tell them, hey, Chad, Chase. Tell them to sit over there. We don't want their kind over here. No Karens. So anyway, sorry. Uh, Suicide Boys, ch cheers. Sweet tea, baby. It's a, 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 a crown... Uh, it's like crown uh, uh, supplement. For sure. That lime, get that lime tea, baby. Chase with that bush non-alcoholic. <laughs> make, it, hey, make it work. That's that placebo, baby. You got a tricky brain. Yeah, for sure. So, I was on the fence at first because I'm white. And then I found out they were white, and I was like, mm. I felt like they were trying a little too hard. But then one day I was riding. And see, this was after like somebody let me hear them on a phone. You know when somebody just hands you a phone? Hey, man, listen to this shit. You can't really hear that shit. Yeah. So one day I was riding. And uh, matter of fact, it was Wes Phillips. Shout out to Wes Phillips again, man. It's, there's going to be a lot of rest in peace Wes Phillips. And it's, it's, it's fucked up, but it's, it is yeah. what it is. Um, so... Me and Wes were riding in my in uh, in the Cadillac, the bank with the bank with the bump in it, because he was trying to let me hear it in his little F one fifty, and I'm like, dude, you got four blown speakers, can't hear shit. Get in the car. So we got in my car, I cranked that shit up, and of course the first things I noticed is you know it's straight three six mafia Memphis style beats. You know what I'm saying? Ninety nine percent three six mafia style beats, even three six mafia samples and all this stuff. You know what I'm saying? Right. So me being the loyal member of the mafia i am i immediately called paul yeah i mean i ain't you know I'm, I'm not i'm not lying to anybody i mean it is what it is i immediately called paul like hey man you heard about these guys called the suicide boys i think they're out of new orleans or somewhere down in louisiana or something which i think i think they are i think they're louisiana ain't they i can't remember if they're california or louisiana it's it's somewhere but yeah. i uh I told him, I was like, uh, these dudes got a lot of samples and shit. And I was like, you know me, I'm always looking out, and, you know, trying to, anytime I hear something, I'm going to always put it in the boss's ear. Yeah. And then, um, then like, two months later, Juicy signs them or some shit. I'm just like, what the fuck just happened? But then I realized, you know, Juicy's one of the people, when he hears something, he jumps on it. If it's yeah. something he's interested in, he's like, oh, like, oh, there's, there's, there's a bag right there. Let's go get that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he already knew it was a bag. He could work with them because they've already been using samples. So it would be easier just to work with them. You know yeah. what I'm and plus they got that. They had to go through them to get those yeah, cleared. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, I heard a lot of the stuff they put out. I, I'm, I'm not just a super duper fan. I love their beats, their tracks and stuff. But, you know, like, uh, I feel like it was a type of phase kind of also. Right. You know, right. Um, right. But, um, I, I ain't got no nothing number love for them. Like uh, they they had some dope ass shit. They oh, really for sure, did. they really did. For sure, and I think a lot of it is just um, I guess people wanted they to hear. Their own, they had their own swag too with that for sure. sound. And for sure, for sure, like a modernized, different. yeah, a modernized three six mafia sound coming out of a bunch of white boys. It was pretty dope to be honest. Yeah, for sure. Um, another thing too, they should have called me to be their leader, and then everything would have been fine. Oh, dude! Especially since people thought you were dead anyway. I know, know right? Just pop back out with a suicide boy. Like, oh, I told you he was dead. He came back to life. All across he the survived States. the bear attack. He's back. He got attacked by a bear and suicide. They came back with the suicide boys dressed as a bear. Oh my god! Yeah, it just all comes together. Um, some other things people like like to hear too is any kind of stories that you have involved in interactions with. 3-6, Paul, Juicy. Is there any off the top of your head that maybe crazy stories like touring or partying or what, what, studio? This is the thing. And, and so I talked to Paul, you know, like I've said in every interview, like I talked to Paul yesterday for 20 minutes. Like, 
I talk to Paul every other day, you know, it's like my father. Mm-hmm. Um, we, even ourselves, me and him get on the phone and talk about memories that we had and just, yeah. and, it, and sometimes like, <clears throat> it'll be one of them situations where he'll call me out of nowhere and just be like, bro, something just came to my head. Do you remember the time? And as soon as he starts it off with, do you remember the time? It's gonna be some crazy ass story. And it's it's so loud because like the more the years go on, like um, it, it's it's one big story. Yeah, yeah for it's sure. so many it's so many crazy fucking moments that's happened from shootouts to gang fights to walking in the wrong hotel rooms to forty bitches fucking and having an orgy to squirt parties to fucking uh, uh, just walking into to mansions in Hollywood Hills to fucking mounds of cocaine and just Playboy bunnies running. I mean, you, you name it, I've seen it. Right. And yeah. it's just one of those, it's like um, some of the stories I can't tell. Well, of course. You know what I mean? Like there's, a, there's, there's one story that's so good that I can't tell and it drives me fucking nuts all the time. And yeah. the only person I can talk to with it about it is with the person it happened with. And it's still one of those, like, even when you're talking to that, when you know you've got that one story, when you're talking to that friend about it, you're even, you're, you feel like you're whispering about it. <laughs> hey, you remember that one time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, shut the fuck up, my wife's right over there. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Right. It's that, that type of story. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's that type of story, right. and it's bad. Right. I mean, it is bad. But I mean, like, um, you know, all of them were awesome, man. Every, every, Every time I'm around either one of them guys, it's a fucking experience, man. It's um, it's always been an experience. It's 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 always been fun. I, I never wake up the next morning like fuck. What the fuck did I get into this for? You know what I'm saying? Like every yeah. time I've ever been out, between back in the old days, you know, to back up until now, you know what I'm saying? Like I wake up every morning the next morning like damn, last night was crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like. Still yep. doing this shit 20 years later. Last night was fucking nuts, man. Like, so, no, I mean, there really ain't no ones that really just, there are, but there's thousands. Right. Well, of course, it's hard to just pinpoint one. And what I would have to do, Nick, matter of fact, what I'm going to do for you is the next time we do our follow up on this. Yeah, you just get. I will go through a list now. and really write down the ones I can and cannot talk about. For sure. And then we'll pick the pros and cons and I'll call the person that it's about and be like, yo, can I say this? Because yeah. it's been 20 something years. <laughs> yeah. Because some of them are that, like, that bad. Uh, 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 what's it called? Uh, incriminating. Incriminating, yeah. It, some of them are incriminating. Some of them are just like, oh my God, I can't believe you said that. Oh my God. Like, you know, and once it's online, it's online. For sure. I know we, we talked about off camera that we could talk about. So many people want to hear about the reality show. Oh, yeah. For we, sure. You want to talk about how that, because we, we barely brushed on it. And it was when we were talking about you doing your last album with them, right. and you just mentioned that you were doing the reality show. Right. But people in the in the comments were talking about how much they loved the show, um, wanted to hear more about it. Like, so how did that come about? When as far as because uh, you were around heavy, you were with them every day back then, right? Yeah. So yeah. what was crazy about that whole situation was, um, um, which I've so I've said this before. It's not that I haven't said it, but I was originally supposed to write hard out here for a pal. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I was originally supposed to write hard out here for a pimp, but I was with my baby mama. I was a fresh father. I didn't have that mentality. And I'm a writer. I'm not one of them super duper creative writers that can just pull a thought out of nowhere and write about it. It has to be something I've either done, I've went through, I have knowledge about, or something that I can relate to. So, you know, I'm sitting here feeding a baby, watching fucking Family Guy. Right. And Paul calls me like, hey, I need you to come to the studio right now. John Singleton and Terrence Howard are here. And they're trying to come up with this song for this movie, this 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 lead theme song, a lead song for a, a soundtrack. I was like, fuck, John Singleton, that's fucking Boys in the Hood, fucking Terrence Howard. God, oh, man. legend, yeah. I'm like, oh my sure. God, I'm on my way. So, of course, I hand the baby off to baby mama, like, I got to go. And, um... You know, I balled to the studio, and at the time, I was living in East Memphis. The studio was downtown, so that was like a little 15, 20-minute drive for me. So now I'm, like, balling, like, trying to think, like, what the fuck do they want me for, for a fucking, you know, no offense, but a, a mostly hoodish movie. Like, right. I'm the white boy of the fucking, what, right, what, right. What, what, what do they expect me to write? Like, it's just, what about, what about, because at the time, I'm over here working on, like, songs like Good Old Boys and Crash the Club, and, and um, we get there, and, uh, 
Paul gives me the rundown. Jimmy, I mean, uh, Paul and uh, Terrence Howard and um, Singleton. Yeah, John Six. Sorry, yeah. I went by. No, Rest in good. peace, boss. I didn't mean to do that. Sorry. Yeah, for sure. Rest in peace, John Singleton. Um, they're all sitting there in the studio, and they're like, "All right, here's the idea." They ain't even got the beat really yet. Nothing. They just got kind of a, a skeleton of a beat. Just the basic, like the hi hat, the kick. They didn't have no music to it. They just had this rhythm. And they were like, it's basically about this pimp. He's got these hoes that just don't want to act right. And he's trying to break into the rap game. And they give me the whole rundown of the movie, the, you know, the storyline or whatever. And I'm like, okay, all right, I'm listening to this shit. And so they give me this kind of, you know, skeleton type beat. And they're like, all right, go in the other room, the writing room, which we had a whole separate room. You just go in there and just kind of vibe. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm sitting there vibing this shit, you know, for 30 minutes. And all like, all like, my phone's going off. This bitch is calling me. The baby needs formula. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? It's just like, woman, I am sitting here with fucking award-winning producers and directors, and you're sitting here telling me about some fucking diapers, but I know we got four more left. I'm only going to be up here for a couple of hours. Yeah, yeah. Let me get this done. Type this shit. is just the type of person my baby mama was, and I don't give a fuck how many of these videos she watches and she looks back on it and thinks she goes, God damn, I was a bitch. Um, shout out to baby mama number one. <laughs> but, um... I just couldn't come up with nothing, bro. I was just blank. Just because, like you said, your mindset. My mindset wasn't was on there. family. Was on right. family time. It was like dad, like dad life type shit, husband duty type shit. And I was still young. I mean, this was 20, 2005, 2004, So I was twenty two years old at the time. Fresh off finally famous. Right? Fresh off finally famous. Yeah. And um, for some reason, Fraser was just stopped by the studio that night to drop off some beers. He had a little couple of blunts to smoke. He just happened to walk into the little writing room first because usually that's where everybody was hanging out. Yeah, that's yeah. That's where we smoked and drank and shit and then all the business happened in the studio. So he walks in. I'm sitting there by himself, by myself. He's like, what's up? What you working on? I was like, man, I, nothing. I can't fucking figure this shit out for nothing. He was like, well, what, what you got? I said, bro, John Singleton, Terrence Howard are in the other room. He's like, for real? I said, yes, I'm working on a movie. I can't come up with nothing. He was like, well, let me, let me hear the beat. Let me, let me hear it. What's it about? I told him the whole storyline. And they sat there for no bullshit. No lie. I give you your motherfucking props, boy. No fucking sat there for about 30 seconds. And they said, hard-headed hoes. Oh, a rapper. He said, man, look. It's hard out here for a pimp. When you're trying to get the money for the rent. Mm, that easy. He goes, uh, with the Cadillacs and gas money spent. We'll have a whole lot of bitches jumping shit. I was like, and I just yep. walked the fuck off. Yep, he just walked I, I in. Walk, I, walked, yep. I walked into the studio. I grabbed Paul, I grabbed Juicy, I grabbed Singleton, Terrence Howard. I was like, look, man, this is not my song. I said, Fraser Boy just walked in and in fucking 20 seconds had the book wrote. And I wrote that motherfucker down real fast as he was writing it. And uh, sure enough, he went in there and he dropped the hook. He, he rapped it. You know it's hard out here mm -hmm. for a pimp. When you're trying to get the money for the rent. He rapped it. Yeah. And then they had Taraji P. Henson come in and she killed it. Like, and I was there the night she came in. And, you know, we're hard. I was like, oh, my God. That was the best assist I've ever. I mean, that was an assist to just a. Yeah. yeah. And it, was a, it was a Gary Payton and Sean Kim man, situation. It seriously was, bro. <laughs> that was, man. That, salute that to Frazier, boy, man. Yeah, salute to Fraser, man, because that was an assist that I that, and and it was a very uh, 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 a very professional assist on my behalf. I feel it, it wasn't me hogging the ball and trying to, you know, I got three, four OGs in here trying to make some magic, and I'm holding them up. So, well, my, my my this is what's funny that I that I've never said on camera. So, um, in real life, I was the only person holding them up for making that song, and then Fraser Boy came in and made the play. All right, the movie comes out. Drops, wins the Oscar. In the movie, when they're trying to record Hard Out Here for a Pimp, there's music playing next door at DJ Paul's house. And they go next door to knock on the door and be like, hey man, can you turn down the music? It's me playing in the background. Lil White, we ain't playing. It's playing in the background. Oh shit. So I was slowing them up from making the song in real life, and somehow I was slowing them up in the storyline. <laughs> In the right. movie, yeah. with the song choice they chose, 
because Paul said it was supposed to be something else, and they were like, no, nah, we're, we're promoting Lil White right now, so let's play yeah. Wayne playing in the background and oh. give him that shine since he didn't get to be on the song. That's love. That's and love. That was Paul, them, but that was them incorporating all their artists. And the, yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's how Paul and Juicy used to work. They would, they would intertwine shit. And, man, when I figured that shit out, it was like years later. I was like, holy shit. I was like on Mushrooms or something when I figured it out. I was like, damn, bro, that's deep. Yeah. I was holding them up in real life and in the studio. So fast forward, fast forward eight months, and the Oscar goes to Three Six Mafia. They win. They they fucking win the Oscar over goddamn Dolly Parton. Yep. Okay, and um, I can remember I just moved into my new house. I just got like a fat ass check. I just bought, moved into this new house on this golf course. I'd only been there for like three days, and the cable guy hadn't showed up yet. So I didn't have no TV on to watch the, the Oscars on. Mm -hmm. So I'm sick. So my partner, Big John, shout out to John. Me and, me and him have always been the biggest Three Six Mafia fans. He shoots over to my house, and he's got it pulled up on his phone where you can hear it. He's got the app or whatever. And I mean, I, I remember he, he just had the oh, it pulled up on the radio like uh, yeah, yeah. the Oscars were on the radio, or he had something. And this was too, it wasn't no app. This wasn't a smartphone. Yet. It wasn't yeah. no smartphone. He yeah. had like a BlackBerry or a fucking something. Uh, yeah, something. And um, we were all crowded around this phone, bro. In this nice big ass house, just crowded around this phone. Everybody, like, shh, 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 shh. <laughs> and it was Queen Latifah. You know it's hard out here for a pimp, and I lost it. I was like, oh my god, oh my god, the assist of the century just won a motherfucking Oscar. And I remember going to my bedroom, bro, and crying my eyes out, just crying. And I mean, like, I didn't even get the Oscar. I didn't care, but the team did. You know what I'm saying? No, for sure, y'all. It's like um, y'all won it. As yeah. soon as Frazier got home, this Fra Frazier was real as fuck for this. As soon as Frazier got back from L.A., he came straight to my house. He was like, here, hold that. Just hold it. And I just held it. And I was like, <laughs> what the fuck, bro? Like, what yeah. the fuck? How did we get a 10-pound chunk of gold from this? He was like, bro, thank you. I was like, no, shit, thank you for help. Dude, you you did that, bro. I was in, I was, I was finna drop the ball and fuck yeah. up everything. He was like, nah, man, we did that together. That was teamwork. That's number love. And then what, re, this is what's called redeemment. After they win the Oscar, 3 Six Mafia never moves. They don't come back to Memphis. Paul and Juicy stayed in LA doing interview after interview after interview after, after TV show, after everything. Mm -hmm. Kimmel, fucking Late Night, Ellen, you name it. That's what MTV calls them wants to get a reality show. They get this reality show. They already know what they want to do. They've already had this idea in the works for a minute since they got down there. And um, I had no idea about this reality show. Paul calls me. Hey, Chase, can I get another shot of sweet tea with two limes? Shot. Shot of sweet tea with two limes. <laughs> Shots. Let's do it. Shots of sweet tea with two limes. I tell you, man, it's going down. I'm living life on the edge. So I get a call from Paul at like two o'clock in the morning. It's like 2 a.m. Memphis time. So it's m midnight in LA. So Paul calls me and he's like, uh, he's like, uh, pack your bags. He's like, uh, what do you mean pack your bags? Look good. It looks I was like, fine. I know, right? It looks amazing. I like, Don't that just look good? I'm telling you, man, I'm on to something, man. The boy's always, a, I'm a trendsetter, man. I'm a step ahead of these motherfuckers. You really are. Go ahead, so, I'll step over here. Keep, keep going. So, um, Paul calls me at 2 o'clock in the morning and says, uh, pack your bags. He said it like I was on American Idol. Pack your bags, you're going to Hollywood. Right. And I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, pack your bags, like to, like now. I need you to pack your bags. I was like, for how long? He said, for about a month. I said, Paul, I got to do laundry, bro. I got two kids now. I can't, yeah. I can't just get up and leave for a month. He said, all right, well, I'm giving you 24 hours. Pack your bags, get to get all your laundry done tomorrow. You got 24 hours. You're coming to LA, we're doing a reality show. You're getting your own episode. And I was like, my own episode? He was like, yeah, it's gonna be Lil White Goes to Hollywood. And dude, I was just like blown away. And of course, baby mom was like, you can't leave for no month. I mean, you got to pay me back, back, back. I'm like, bitch, do you want me to do this or not? Like, right. how far do you want me to go in this? So sure enough, have my bags back next day. Basically packed every bit of art, article of clothing I owned. I packed, dude, Paul even laughed. I brought like 22 pairs of shoes, like fucking 14 pairs of pants, like 25 t-shirts, jackets, a big jacket. Paul was like, why don't you bring a big jacket? It's California. I was like, it was like, it's fucking summertime. You don't need a coat. You didn't want to leave anything to change, dog. <laughs> right. And um, 
it was so weird to fly in. We go to the hotel and he goes, all right, a van's about to pick you up. Mm -hmm. When you get here, you're filming. When you get here, you're filming. I'm like, what do you mean? I, mean, I know I'm gonna be filming today. He's like, no, 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 no. You don't understand. The lady that's driving you in the van right now, there's a lady driving you in the van, right? I'm like, yeah, I'm in the back seat. He's like, okay, that lady's name's Carol or whatever the fuck her name was. He's like, uh, she's gonna get out, mic you. You're gonna ring the doorbell. When you come inside, you're on TV. You're on, you're, we're being recorded live. We're, we're not live, but you know what I'm saying? We're, right. we're, it's, it's we're rolling, film, right, we're rolling. Right, right, right. We're in the middle of the show. So my cue was to get out the car, I got mic'd up. My cue was to ring the doorbell. Well, this house ain't got no fucking doorbell. It's one of these rich ass houses that's just got cameras, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm sitting there looking around the fucking door for this doorbell and there's cameras right here that can see me. Yeah. But it also sees me like looking for this doorbell, like where the fuck is this goddamn doorbell? So finally I just said, fuck it, and I walk in the door. Well, I caught them off guard. They didn't know they I was supposed to ring the doorbell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I walk in, there's just cameras just poof, right there. Like, as soon as you walk in, and I'm like, oh, shit, this is real. Like, I'm on reality TV right fucking now. Like, I, this, and, it, and it took me a good, shit, five or six hours to really realize what the fuck was going on. Like, like yeah. this shit's actually fucking happening. <laughs> like, damn. And uh, it went cool, man. I had a good time. I was out there for a month total. Yeah. Um, a month total, we were out there. Um... How many seasons did y'all do that? Just we one? only did the one season. Okay. We did one season. We only did one season of it because there was some complications between the director and the producer. And the way they had the contract set up was they couldn't work on it without each other. And then they had a falling out. So then it was like they couldn't. Yeah. And I've even told Paul and Juicy, I said, man, we should do a reboot of that shit eventually with the whites and fucking reboot it with me and my wife and my crazy ass crew. Yeah. And, um, but yeah, like we was out there for a month. And I will say this, nothing was scripted. I've had that, I've had, I've had that asked a lot. Yeah, yeah. Now, That's always the big question with reality shows, I think. Nothing was scripted. Yeah. There might have been a couple couple of times when you say something and the mic don't pick it up and you try to go back and redo it as good as you can, just the vocals. But nothing was scripted at all. They never st tried to get y'all to stir up stuff between each oh, other. Oh no, that was definitely a thing. Okay. Like, there was no scripted words. There was nothing okay. on paperwork. Like even gotcha. even the day of the me and computer mishap, yeah. Like that morning, and I'll fucking I'll tell it now, Paul Juicy. I don't give a fuck if you get mad. That morning, I woke up. I was hungover as shit. The MTV producer dude comes in and goes, "Hey man, computer been talking shit about you all morning long." Oh, see, and just kind of walked yeah. off, and I was like. Fuck, the fuck computer, fuck computer. I've always been like, man, fuck computer. Shout out to computer, I love you. Yeah. But I've always been like, man, fuck computer. He ain't talking about shit. So then, computer gets to about a bed. They be like, man, Lil White's been talking shit about you all morning long. Computer ain't the type of person to say, man, fuck Lil White. He ain't talking about shit. Computer's the type of person. The next time he sees me, yeah, motherfucker, I heard you been talking shit. Yeah. And then it just escalated and like. It, like later on at night, like once it was all over, we, we realized what they did. It was fun for the. It was fun looking back at it on camera, but it was like they really did put me and my homie in a point. Like we've already bumped heads, but now y'all are making us like fucking rams. Like, and like even when I threw the drink in his face, like everybody was like, "What was that water?" No, that was vodka and cranberry. We actually got charged for a fucking stain on the roof from vodka and cranberry being on their white ass ceilings. So like, did y'all get in a legit fight fight? No, nah, we didn't get the actual just... physical fight, no, because yeah. he, he couldn't catch me. He was trying to fold me up and put me in, like, a move, yeah. so he couldn't catch me, though. Because well, that house was a four-story, 8,200-square-foot mansion on the side of the hills, and it had, like, circular halls. So you could run up and down. You could run all through this house, and you could not get caught. There was no dead ends, like, no right, dead ends. Right, 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 right. So, like, even the dead end when I got to the studio... When it shows me running to the studio and he's banging on the door, yeah, yeah. even that studio room has a balcony that goes out to the other room that has a balcony that goes into this room. So you can always go around any room. It was just, it was a cool built house. Matter of fact, Wiz Khalifa ended up buying that house after we shot that video. He said he loved that house so much on TV, he ended up buying it. Yeah. 
Oh, that's crazy. Which what? I mean, that's kind of which is crazy because him and Juicy. Are yeah, so well, cool he's talking. Wiz is a big fan, like super yeah. three six fan as well, as like just like me. Yeah. But he said he, he said he had so much fun and loved that 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 video, that show. He's like, man, I want to have that house. And then one day I was watching MTV. I was watching something. It was an interview of. Uh, yeah, it was an interview an interview of Wiz, and he was like he was walking around his house, and I was like, man, the house looked familiar as fuck. And then he goes out on the balcony and he turns around and he goes, oh, if y'all don't realize or not, this is the old 3 Six Mafia Hollywood house. I was like, I fucking knew it. Shout out to Wiz. We need to do a song together soon, Wiz. Oh, we talked dope. about it at Memphis and May, motherfucker. Let's get it done. I love that that album that he dropped, him and Juicy dropped uh, recently. I thought, I thought that one was really dope. I, it just dropped, didn't it? Yeah, like within the last six months, yeah. Oh, For no, sure. I'm talking about the new... No, uh, Juicy's going to drop one with Lex Luger. That's what I'm thinking of. Oh, fire. He's going to drop one That's like the Rubber Band Business days right, right there, baby. I'm hoping it's Rubber Band Business 4, shit. Yeah. So here's a question that I wanted to ask you. This will probably be tough for you to maybe answer, but I think it'll be a good question to talk about. If you had to pick five Lil White songs, right? If they said you, your five, maybe not best, but your favorite five songs that you've done, do you th- could you do that? Could you pick five? Soon you'll understand, because it's the only song I've actually been, I guess you would say it has no like rap bullshit in it. It's, yeah. it's one million percent honest to God truth in every line. It's about my daughters. Mm-hmm. That's definitely on there. Um, as much as I cannot stand this fucking song, I'd have to say Oxycontin. Yeah. Just because of how it impacted my life and how it changed everything. And, just, yeah. and it took off the way it did. No matter what the positive or negative yeah. responses was from it. Like, it and what I'm, people don't understand, Oxycontin was not supposed to be a single. It was an album cut. Yep. It turned into like a cult classic, and it went viral before viral was viral. Yep, for sure. Um, we, um, we talked about that, the gift and the curse yeah. kind of effect with that. Yeah. Um, keep going. Mm-hmm. It was the first album I truly sang on. Yep. Um. There's a song on one of my mixtapes called Lesson Learned. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people ain't heard it. It's, it's, it's Which that's the one you talk about the whole situation. I tell the whole story yeah, about yeah. I tell my whole story about how my mom got beat up and yeah. how the old folk, the, the old crew and shit yep. you know, started all that bullshit. Yep. Only because I, I, I've never opened up like that. You know, and that's still the only time I've ever opened up. And well, I you have, did you did on with us, but it wasn't in is full of well, yeah, I mean in a song. Yeah, yeah, on song. Yeah, yeah for sure. In a song. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and and I people talk to, about that in the interview, too. They talk about that song. And I have to say, number five has not been written yet. There you go. Yeah, I think I might have to go like that. That's dope, dude. I like that you've... I like that you... Hey, can I get some cheddar poppers in this motherfucker? <laughs> jalapeno cheddar balls. <laughs> cheddar jalapeno poppers. <laughs> I wish you quit making jokes about my old balls, Mike. We're not putting Brady's balls on the podcast. I mean, they smell like cheese. Oh, well, like Damn. Damn. But they look like jalapeno Just for the record, y'all, we are at my favorite bar, and there's just the locals in here. and It's only about five, six people. Yeah, it's a really cool spot. I'm glad I'm finally getting to see it. I love that you're just keeping these coming, Chase. Hell yeah. It's a sweet tea. So before we get into that, I, but yeah, I, guess, I was about going back to that last yeah, that five. Yeah. Uh, I feel like, um, and I'll say this to you, and I'll say it to the fans. I don't know how much longer I'm gonna do this shit. I don't want to do it much longer. I've got a few ideas that I've been wanting to get into for years. Um, I've finally got some people I've really been talking serious, seriously about getting this white lightning moonshine like really serious yeah, in, in all liquor stores, and that being a crazy money venture that that I've been wanting to get involved in for years. Um, I've got a couple of, you know, I've got two strains I'm working on uh, of uh, straight up fucking killer, killer crossbreeds of some fucking thunder. Yeah. And by with thunder, I mean legal marijuana. Right. Uh, obviously not here in the state of Tennessee because right. Tennessee is going to be the last one to do it. Right. Um, uh, I have to interrupt. Somebody special on my phone. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, what's up, sister? Hey, boo. Turn around and the camera. It's my sister. <laughs> I 
Hey, what's up? It's Shout out Money Shot Photography, sis in the building. Money Shot in the building. Hey, baby. You, you want to take a shot of sweet tea with me? Do you know I do? Yeah. Oh, happy, happy belated birthday. Thank you. I miss you, boo. I miss you too. I miss you too. I'll be up at, next time I'm up in Nashville. Are you still in the Ville? Oh, it's, it's, Bet. it's yeah. awesome. It's Next awesome. time we're up that way, I'm going to come see you for sure. I miss you. You better, man. I miss you, too. I really, really do. Are we podcasting? Yeah, we're totally podcasting. We're doing, yeah, we're doing this, another one of his interviews. But I will definitely get with you soon. I love you, sister. I love you, too. It's good to see your face. I miss you, man. You, too. Happy birthday. Thank you. I'll talk to you all soon. Bye, girl. Bye. Shout out to Jamie, man. That's my yeah, for sure. Home, girl. That's sis. That's sis, sis has been, brother. man. That woman's had my back since 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 Jelly Roll first introduced me to her. Mine too. Mine too, man. But what was where was we at? My bad. We were talking about you was talking about um, uh, moonshine. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm just, trends. Yeah, like I've yeah. got, um, you know, I've got, I've got like three business ventures I'm in the process of working on. Um, between the shine, the legal. And um, the other one I don't want to discuss right now. Yeah, yeah for I sure. Because I don't, I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to tell my next move unless it's going to be going. Right. Well, and I think I think what would be dope for you would for would be you mm. doing the podcast route. Well, another that. Well, me and her are going to do that. Actually, I'm glad you yeah. said that. Nicole's starting her own podcast, and uh, we're going to start doing Wednesday with the Whites. Yeah, that's going to be dope, dude. And um, um, it's mostly going to be her podcast, but I'm going to come in once a week, give my ignorance, and um. But I'm also finna get back into production a lot because uh, yeah. I'm a mean motherfucker in the studio, not just rapping. I mean, I can produce like a motherfucker. I can't play any instruments, but I know what I want to hear, and I know the motherfuckers that can play them. Yeah. So those are like the main things I'm gonna be getting into in the next couple of years because this rap shit, it's just you know, it's taking you've done a so much, I and mean, you've done so much already. It's yeah, I've done like so much in the rap community and in, in the history of it. Like, I've created lanes, bro. Yeah. Like, I've really created lanes. Me and Justin were talking about this shit at the, at the last rave. He was like, dude, you created lanes. It's got genres now. Yeah. You know, so I'm not fixing to sit here and say I'm not a goat. <laughs> nah, motherfucker. <laughs> For about? sure. Uh, um, we, we could talk about this for just a second because we just found out about this. R.I.P. B. Peasy. Man, yes. Goddamn, man. If anybody don't know... Uh, BPZ was a third artist on the Snow album with me and Jelly Roll. He was Project Pat's artist on the Money Train for a minute. And uh, he had just got recently released from prison on June 30th. And as of yesterday, which is the 27th, 24th. 20, 24th. Today's 24th, the 25th. Not even two and a half months later, man. He, he is no longer with us. I don't know what happened yet. Yeah. So uh, just get send your prayers to all the people in that town, all the family. Rest in peace, be peasy. I hate to see that. I'm so glad I got to see you at the Redneck Raid. It fucking broke my heart when I heard you yesterday, man. Yeah, I just I just wanted you to be able to give my, give yeah. your RP to him because we I just saw that on my way yeah, here. Yeah, it's crazy, man. Yeah. It's just nuts. So RP be peasy. I never got a chance to meet him, but I heard he was a silly son of a bitch. Man. Yeah, I heard I heard he was he was cool and he was super funny. So um, yeah. rest in peace, peasy. For sure. And the boy was hard too, and he was just. What a lot of people didn't understand is that people would always say, like, oh, man, you and Jelly are so much other be so much better than that dude. I'm like, yeah, we're also seven years older than that guy. He was, so he was he young. Was a baby, man. Yeah. He's, he's, like, five years older than Jelly, and I'm, like, three or four years older than Jelly myself. So, like, yeah, he was a baby on Snow. He was trying to keep up with some OGs, and he was doing his thing, man. Yeah. Matter of fact, I'm going to listen to Snow all day today. When I leave For today. sure. Um, Matter of fact, when you get done, if you, and when you get done watching this podcast, when it comes out, Check out that SNO Little White Jelly Roll BP. This is the whole album. Fucking right. bang. It's a banger. It's, a banger. it's actually one of the most slept on, hypnotized minds, white music, money train projects that was ever made and only made. Yeah, I, I, I think my favorite track on that album is All I Do Is Chase Paper with Billy mm. West. Just because Man. it's got that UGK 360 feel. I've got a bunch of songs on that. Rock and Roll. Rock and Roll is my second favorite. Woo! Yeah. When I come to your town, I'll be looking for liquor. All the bad bitches, weed and switch. I'm the man yeah. that'll take your girlfriend to up and down and dicker. <laughs> better in a Memphis. All the better pay. <laughs> I buy, I kill that verse. Yeah, that was fire. Rest in peace, peace. Yeah, rest in peace, man. Um, okay, so do you want to, let's, let's, let's talk about the recent happenings. Yeah, I got a little ankle bracelet on for God knows how long. And uh, we're taking, 
Shots of sweet tea and lime. So needless to say, White's just chilling on the alcohol. So if you're wondering why. But at the same time, I've been so stressed out about a lot of shit that's been going on in my life personally. Uh, yeah. I've been going a little too hard, and uh, I think and it, it was funny. I was actually on, the night I was on the way up here by myself. I did, and I look, people that know me know I'm not a religious person. They know I, I don't. I'm not political. I don't do all that shit. Everybody knows I'm not religious. I just believe in higher powers of the universe. I, I'm a very spiritual person. Right, right, right. So I'm sitting there thinking about this fucking crazy ass day I've had. Just how stressed out the fuck I've been. I'm driving. I'm like, I'm just going to the bar to have a drink. Fucking just frustrated. And I said, man, universe, send me a sign. Mm -hmm. Send me a real sign. And then I did something that I've never done before. And I can't even believe I'm saying this, but I, this still don't mean shit. It's because, like I said, I don't believe in religions. I believe in a higher power. I said, God, mm -hmm. God, if you're real, show me. Right. And four hours later, my ass was in the back of a cop car. Headed to goddamn jail. And then I went to sleep thinking it was a dream. I woke up in black and white stripes and I was like, that motherfucker sent me a sign for real. <laughs> and the sign is, oh no, what did I do? Yeah. And, but look, it's all good, man. I needed to slow down drinking anyway. Maybe I, I know a lot of good's gonna come out of this. Man, it'll probably take these ideas I've had and my procrastination and just kick that procrastination right out the window because I ain't got no reason to not do it. Right. Now, if I sober up a little bit, now don't get it twisted now, it's just for alcohol. I can still smoke my weed and shit. Boom, but, um, for sure. But I think if I eliminate the alcohol for a while, I think I'll be able to focus a lot more on my, on my work. My idea is these new ventures I'm gonna work on and, and just, music, just get back into the music and shit because you know, alcohol bring you down, we all know that, but shit, it's been a rough couple of years and that shit. Motherfucker gotta get drunk to deal with life these days. Yeah, between, I mean, between Rona being an issue and hindering a lot of the moves you were, you and a lot of people were trying to make, but that, and then you've lost some people too. That's never. Oh, dude, between the last two years, we've lost 16 people. Yeah. 16 people. I don't do drugs no more. I prescribe my goddamn. My Xanax and my fucking weed, and I smoke my weed, and now I can't even drink. So anybody got shit to say to me, fuck y'all. Yeah. Then I got a new set of titties and, <laughs> well, you know. Right. The wife. But hey, man, like you said, like we talked about, man, that, that, you were able to do some reflecting and, you know, whatever's going to happen. It looks like I told Nicole earlier, I was like, you know, this little fucking ankle bracelet vibrates like once every hour. I said every time it vibrates, it's just, I'm just psychologically thinking, you're doing great, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's a good one. You got to make some kind of, you know, positive out I of was, it. I was laying in know? bed last night and figured out how to make it work as a as a footstool for my other foot. It's like, oh, that's, <laughs> I, mean, I can make this work, maybe. It's damn near like the VHS player worm had on his ankle when he came home. Man, dude, it's basic. Yeah, it's close. Yeah. I'm also going to use this time to figure out how to uh, get my engineer buddies together and figure out how to make a smaller one. Right. So this is what we could talk about. This. So moving on to what new music that you that you're working on currently. Yes, sir. How did you get linked? How did you meet Justin Time? Do you want to talk about that and talk about how that came about and your newfound like hobbies and stuff like that? You yeah. know, with the with, like with what's going on with White now and everything. So it started. It really started. I started hearing about Justin to a couple of other people, and. Um, then I see the redneck race that, you know, somebody mentioned, oh, uh, who was it? Was it Jelly? Somebody went to the redneck rave the year before and posted it. And I was like, damn, that's the type of shit I need to be. I know Jelly went to some of the earlier ones, but yeah. I don't remember which one. Which one so I remember it. just seeing it. And then I remember commenting on something like, damn, man, I need to be at this shit. And I could be wrong. And Justin will definitely tap in and correct me when I'm wrong. All right, right. But I remember, uh, you know, reaching out to him like, yo, bro, would love to be on some shit like that. He was like, well, man, look, I got one coming up here. You know, give me your price. And uh, next time you're in Indy or whatever, or I could, you know, it just so happens I had a show in Indianapolis like two weeks later. And uh, Justin just pops up at the show. No contract. Half deposit in hand. Did it on a handshake. Yeah. 
you know, no contract whatsoever, and uh, just, uh, just, just, just man to man, just like, just respected one another. He drove, he came to the show, showed, showed his face, popped up, kept him 100, handled the business. We did the rave. The other half of the bread was good, of course, because it was fucking packed. He, he knows what the fuck he's doing. Dude's got a goddamn system, and um, he was on stage. You know, he was on stage doing his set. I'm sitting there watching, and I'm just thinking, I'm looking around. And, I, and, you know, I called him off to the side, and I was like, dude, I just had a, a premonition. He was like, what? I said, dude, what would have happened if just the good old boys would have never came out? He was like, I, was like, dude, I don't know. Yeah, man. I said, do you think any of us would even be out here? He said, well, people would be out here riding, but probably not for a mud music festival with country rap music. And I was like, bro, we need to link up and do something. He was like, you want to do it? What you talking about? You want to do it? You want to? I said, no, I'm on, I'm in on all the redneck raves. Any rave I can make it to, I'm in. Yeah. I said, you don't fuck around and make me buy a side by side, which I did. Yeah. Um, we were in it earlier. We showed footage of that. Yep. Yeah. We'll have footage of it, yep. right here. <laughs> um, but um, he was just a very smart businessman, and when you sit there and listen to him talk and how he how he has shit broken down. He knows his shit, man. And there's not a lot of people in his business that as a party planner can promote and still get up on stage and rock out. Right, you know for sure. Yeah, Too many absolutely. people that can pull it all off. And um, dude can. He's got an image. He's got a his name. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And uh, afterwards, we talked like the next day or so before we rolled out. And he was like, man, you serious about doing the EP? I was like, fuck yes, dude. I was like, dude, because if I'm one of the OGs of this shit and you are the OG right now of the party's life of this shit, mm -hmm. between us two, we can put an album together and fucking have 100,000 motherfuckers out there. Yeah. And uh, that's the motherfucking plan. This next album, this fucking Little White vs. Just Time album is fixing to be nothing but bangers. It's going to bring them country boys out. It's going to bring out all them fucking old red, redneck boys that thought I was dead. Yeah, y'all finna bring them four wheels out for this party. When you y'all y'all called it would you, Country Crunk, right? Which is, is that no, country? that's uh, that's uh, that was one of uh, him and uh, uh, um, it's just gonna be called Lil White versus Justin Time. Yeah, but I'm saying like that. Oh, we, we did the style some, of music yeah, is, yeah, is similar. Like, it, it's kind of like I, three I, six. Yeah, like country it's crunk. your sound and his sound combined. Yeah, I'd say yeah. kind of country crunk. Yeah, that makes sense. I know that's what they call Rebels Only Three, but I'm I'm just meant like as far uh, yeah, as the genre. Kinda, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it's still that country gangster, gangster country, country gangster rap. Yeah, because like when. People that are fans of Lil White, because I've heard half of the of the album from when I came down there in in, in Indianapolis, and it's if you're a fan of Lil White, like the old, you're, you're yeah. still going to get all that st yeah, same yeah, stuff, yeah. but you're also going to get you branching out and doing different types of beats. You're still doing you, but your own over country rap beats. Yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah, man. Look, everybody knows the way I rap. Ain't shit changing. I, I can. I'm like a fucking chameleon. For sure. I get on that beat. And I just blend right in. Yep. And you. And you wrote. I want to say you wrote four verses that night in like three hours and recorded them. Oh yeah. And yeah. we left, and you were still going. I think. Yeah. I think you had like another one to do. Cause see, like when I'm in a room full of other people, dude. If I'm vibing, dude, I can write a verse in 15 minutes. I can let's, drop it in five and be like, let's 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 mix or move to the move on to the next one. We'll make sure we get done. Yeah, well, like you were saying in the but last interview. when I'm by myself, it could take me all day. The last interview, you were like, I booked a four-hour studio session, and you're like, I won't need that. I got a dinner reservation in 45 minutes. Yeah. I'll be it's here really 15, happy. 20 minutes. Yeah, I'll be yeah, there I'll be here 20 minutes. I got to be at the steakhouse at 7.15. It's 6.05. <laughs> I'll be out of here at 6.40. What are you talking about? Yeah. I still got a 15-minute drive to the restaurant. Yeah, traffic, some bitch. <laughs> yeah, see, I got that new, the new, the new singles dropping. Beat up pickup truck. Beat up pickup truck featuring the lax. Yeah, that's dropping uh, in a couple. Well, when this is being filmed in a few weeks, right? Yeah, should be yeah. yeah. Um, so y'all be on the lookout for the, uh, the Just in Time Little White project. It's gonna be dope. As far as like some of the other people that you met in, within the three six, did you pretty much meet all those guys right around the same time? Like whenever you you took the demo up there, that's when you met Paul and Juicy, right? Uh, well, actually, when we all met up with them. The only ones that weren't there that night was Project Pat wasn't there, Chat wasn't there, mm -hmm. and Lord wasn't there. So I hadn't met Pat, Chat, and Lord, which to me were three of the like scariest. Right. And it was like, okay, man, it was a good thing I didn't meet them the first time. Like, <laughs> but then over time, like they turned out to be like the coolest. Like even like last night, like I, I called Project Pat last night. To let him know about BPZ and like 
you know, you could hear the genuine, like, damn, man, that, that was my boy, like, you know, and like, what a lot of people don't know about Project Pat is Project Pat's a very, very, very secretive, sticks to himself person. Yeah. He's not out there in the shit. He's, he's either at home or going to get a bag somewhere. He does not yeah. be out fucking around. He don't really talk to too many people. He keeps to himself. But that's always been Pat. But, um, yeah, I mean, out of everybody in 3-6, I met most of everybody all on the same night except Pat, Chat, and Lord because uh, I think Pat had a show. Lord was in jail, and Chat was probably somewhere robbing somebody or something. I'm just joking, Chat. You know I love you. She's probably like, whatever I was robbing somebody. <laughs> Shout out to the Chat and Pat and RIP Lord for sure. Matter of fact, Chat, I'm going to holler at you. I need to get you on this podcast. And, for sure. Uh, Pat, you too. Yeah, for sure. That'd be awesome. Man. Same with Frazier Boy. I mean, any, any of these guys. Like, I'm yeah, fan, anybody, fans of all y'all. Um, I love that story, man. That story you told about the heart out here for a pimp, that's a gem of a story, dog. And, and Frazier, I never would have known. I'll tell you the exact same version. That's just dope that y'all. That's dope. That's a dope ass, like, way that that it's happened. It's camaraderie, too. It was just, yeah. it was how much camaraderie was in that studio back in the days. And that's what me and Paul were just talking about the other day. When Paul went to, he went to uh, Nashville a few weeks ago to went with Yellow Wolf and to just get a different vibe from the LA vibe. Yeah. And uh, he said he's going he's gonna to start coming back to to, to Nashville you know, a lot more and, yeah. and calling out the homies to get that vibe back. Because, you know, when you got your homies in one room, yeah, it don't matter if y'all been homies 20 years, two right. years, six months. If you got good ideas and you start bouncing them off one another, you're going to get good shit. Absolutely. I mean, I mean look at Jelly Rolls camp. Yep. Like and man, look. Matter of fact, shout out to motherfucking David Ray. Shout out to Jelly Roll. Shout out to T Stoner. Shout out to Casey. Shout out to all the folks over there in yeah. motherfucking Bad Apple, dude. Y'all motherfuckers have the blueprint right now, and I want you to know I am so proud of y'all from the bottom of my motherfucking heart. Jelly Roll. <sighs> Jelly Roll. Yeah, Jelly man. Roll. Jelly Roll. Jason. Yeah. Mister DeFord. <laughs> Totem Pole Roll. Yeah. Fat man. man Jones. Dude, I'm almost in tears over here. You have made me so proud this year. Yeah, man. Just like this morning, they announced that he's got the theme song for SummerSlam, WWE SummerSlam. He's he's doing the theme the, the theme song for SummerSlam. I mean, bro, when I found out about Bridgestone, the weekend, yeah, fucking dude. birthday, fucking you know, then 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 Kimmel and just all, dude. Yeah, man. It's dope shit, dog. Hey, man. I'm so proud of you, brother. Oh yeah. Hats off to you, boss. Yeah. And I always knew you could fucking do it, boy. Yeah. Cheers, Bush non-alcoholic to you. <laughs> Got me tearing up over here. Yeah, man, he's he's shit. he's always. I mean, this is. See, these are real tears. I'm not drunk. I'm not. This ain't one of my. Oh man, I'm just, yeah. No, I mean, I love my brother, and I'm so proud of him. And I knew he could do it, man. I knew he could do it, and I'm and just watching him do it is just. It's like it's like being alive watching Elvis do it, or being alive watching you know Michael do it, or any yeah. of the greats, man. I look at Jelly like that. Like it's like. It's like, yeah, I put him up there like that, man, and I'm very proud of my brother. I, I, I wish him nothing but more and more success. Yeah. More and more. Yeah. To the, Bad Apple. Well, another thing, too. I, I, Chase, I, when you get done, hit me with another shot, so I got I to gotta cheers to shit. Shot of sweet tea and Sweet lime. tea, baby. Eat yourself down on that sweet tea, sir. <laughs> you, you, you've had a couple too many. Don't make me get rowdy in here. All right, hey, you are rowdy. <laughs> you are too, Reggie Butler. What's your name, Lil White? What's your name, Reggie Butler? The um, here's what. Maybe one. come hug you in front of your podcast. <laughs> Don't do that. The uh, do that. he will too. Here's something I want to ask you too. Actual shots. I, 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 <laughs> We're not done yet, Reggie. Hold on. I love you. I love you, you Reggie. You're side by side. Over. Hey, 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 you put the rut in the, in the middle of the field. Yo, crazy bastard. So, one thing I wanted you to talk about, just your personal experience. Of course, in the comments, people always say certain things about how Paul and Juicy, yeah, that line was... You saw that. No, you're good. Yeah, the, I think the camera side was almost 3D. That's pretty dope. Yeah, the... Uh, the ca the comments love to talk about how they think they know certain things and you're good. I just wiped it on my pants. I'm they talked ready. about it. Talk about how well three six. You know they they didn't take care of the artists. They Both. they did this. They did that. 
just both. your personal experience with Paul and Juicy and, and, and your time with him. Personal experience with Paul and Juicy. As far as, like, just to despair, because people say that. and they, What and a lot of people that have said this fail to realize, and this is why they say the things they say. Paul and Juicy signed most of them to distribution deals, okay? Yeah. To show you the ropes on what to do once your deal's done. Same that they did with you. And I, all I right. did was follow the fucking blueprint. Yeah. Soon as my contract was up, I started white music. I fucking had Jelly Roll, I had Shamrock, I had Miscellaneous at one point, I had Fraser Boy, I had yep. Thug Therapy, I had a lot of shit going. I did my own shit, I started my own merchandise. I'm the one who got Paul and Juicy to put their merchandise in Selecto hits because it would make more money because my overhead was under. Yeah. I took the fucking information that they gave me and I used it. Everybody else just ignored it, got high, got drunk, got paper, fucked hoes, bought cars, bought jewelry, and never focused back on the business side of it. And I'm talking to whoever, has, and I know, I know, I know who you're talking about. And I'll say it plain as day: Paul and Juicy never fucked me. Paul yeah. and Juicy showed me the way. I'm still doing great today. To this day, yeah. I'm still cashing checks. To this day, yes. all my bills are paid. To this day, I've got excess amount of money in the bank. I mean, I just bought a pair of eight thousand dollar titties. <laughs> Just out of nowhere. Hell yeah. Bought $20,000 side-by-side. Just because. Hell yeah, make it rain on him. Make yeah. it, I, I bought the side-by-side -side because I knew the titties were bouncing. The side-by-side. -side. <laughs> so it's like the gift that keeps on giving. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, 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 but see, a lot of them people yeah. that are saying this didn't know how. They're not business-minded. Well, they're they not. Can, and they're most of them are YouTube trolls, too. Well, but, no, what I'm saying. But, yeah. But the, but the, but the, the artists people, that are complaining. Well, the yeah. people, the artists that complained weren't business-minded. They were. They could just rap. Right. And once the money was gone, the money was gone. Yeah. That's it. That's it, that, and that's that's my only answer on that. One. No, for sure. And I wanted you to clear that up because all you can talk about is what I talk is to your Paul experience. every day. Exactly. And you, if you, I call yeah. Paul right now and said, "Paul, I'm in trouble," he would say, "What do you need?" It don't matter what the fuck I tell him. I can tell that motherfucker I need a band aid or ten million fucking dollars, and that bitch will be here like that. Yeah. Like I, my luck, he'd call somebody that he knows across the street to bring me a band aid. Or he called the bank down the road to drop off a bag. Yeah. You know what I mean? And Paul's like a father to me. And Juicy do the same fucking thing, man. Yeah, man. I talk to Paul a lot more than I do Juicy because Juicy's, he's a lot busier than Paul these days. He's, right. still, doing, he's still on his solo shit. Yeah. Paul's more on his production side. He's, he's, he's went back to his roots. You know, Paul does his DJ parties now. He's, he's having fun with it. And they both got their own element to it. So, yeah. cheers, sweet tea to them motherfuckers. It's the first sober cheers I've ever did to Paul and Juicy. <laughs> cheers and one for the bar. Yeah, yeah. Lil White, man. We appreciate it, dog. You know, we had to come. Always a pleasure. I love you, brother. I love you too, dog. We came to catch up with you and uh, we'll be back again. Yes, sir. Um, but again, y'all be sure to comment, subscribe, like, hit that like button. You better believe it. And uh, y'all go support alive. White. Follow me on Instagram. For sure. We'll put your put all White's info on there. And uh, Chat Arms TV, man. Show and prove, motherfucker. Hell yeah.